Hello everyone, this is Labor Economics, Chapter 3, Labor Demand, Part 3. This is Dr. Gerek. In this part, we'll talk about short-run labor demand curve. Okay, let's get started. The demand curve for labor comes from the, remember in previous part, here we are. It comes from the value marginal product curve. I went back way back. Okay, it's the downward sloping portion of the value marginal product curve that lies below the intersection of value average product and value marginal product curve. So it's this part, right? This is the labor demand curve. So let's continue. So in general, labor demand curve for labor shows how many employment workers the firm hires for each possible wage level holding capital constant the labor demand curve is downward sloping if you remember general demand curves in economics is downward sloping they're all downward sloping and this is usually the quantity in this case it's employment and in this case price of employment is wage rate and demand we're going to have employment demand so it's going to yes it's a demand curve but it's employment demand curve just like any other demand curve it's downward sloping this reflects the fact that additional workers are costly and alter average production due to law of diminishing returns do you remember the law of diminishing returns basically marginal product of labor starts going down we learned about this in principles of microeconomics class and also, we learned about this in this part of our slides. Hold on, I'm going to take you back. Law of diminishing returns happened right here, folks. Marginal product of labor started. Marginal product of labor started declining. So, law of diminishing returns set in right here after the after the hiring of third person. With the hiring of fourth person, marginal product declines the reason behind is that you have fixed capital you keep adding more and more labor to this fixed input okay so then additional workers output goes down value margin product goes down as well um so labor demand curve example this was the example we studied in previous part if you haven't watched part two please go ahead and do that so Short run, short run labor demand curve looks like this. DE, demand for employment, labor, employment, number of workers, wage rate, right? So this is that portion of the value marginal product curve or price times marginal product of employment. It eventually declines because the short run labor demand, uh, it eventually declines because of law of diminishing returns or law of diminished marginal product of labor. As a result, short-run labor demand curve is downward sloping. For instance, a drop in wages from $22. Like how do I find how many people to hire? Go hit the demand curve. Eight workers hired at $22. If the wages go down to $18 somehow, go hit the demand curve. Boom. It implies higher number of workers, increases firms' employment. So increasing the price of the output, what does it do to your graph? So let's say your high, your wage rate is $22. So this is the wage rate. And price goes up. Price goes up. Price comes to this value margin product curve as a constant. So this curve is going to shift to the right or up. Okay. So if this is the case, this is with the new price level. New price level P prime, let's say, is greater than P. So your value margin product curve shifts to the right or up. Uh, okay. So what happens even with the same wage rate? You're now going to hire. You were hiring 8 people. Now you're going to hire 12 people. So if the product you're selling is, uh, be, it, it becomes more expensive, you can hire more workers optimally. Let's talk about two rules of profit maximization. So first rule is the marginal productivity condition. We talked about this. Higher labor up to where value marginal product is equal to the wage rate of the individual. We talked about this in previous part. 
And I want you to remember the microeconomics principles clause. And this is connecting profit maximization to the optimal level of hiring. Okay. So in microeconomics, if you remember, we decided to produce Q star, you know, the best level of output, how much to produce, right? Such that marginal cost equals marginal revenue. This again comes from profit function and it comes from first order condition or first derivatives to find our uh, optimal level of output. So this says in English, the cost of producing an additional unit of output, marginal cost, is equal to the revenue obtained from selling that output, marginal revenue. Okay, so how do we make output decision? I'm just reviewing a little bit. Profit maximizing firm produces up to the point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. We talked about it. I'm just rewriting it. Remember, remember that for a perfectly competitive company, marginal revenue... This is basically in English, how much more money I'm going to earn if I sell one more of these cups. These are Stanley cups I got as a Christmas present. These are $40, very expensive. I got it as a present. So if the company, when the company sells these for $40, that's the price they receive. That's exactly how much more their revenues go up, $40. Okay? So... Plugging instead of this marginal revenue, you can plug in price. Okay, so a profit maximizing perfectly competitive PC for a perfectly competitive firm will make decisions such that price is equal to marginal cost. Okay, I'm just reminding you principles of micro. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm just going to remind you again this was the dollars, okay, quantity or output. Remember, we had the marginal cost curve, J is U-shaped here, marginal cost. And in principle, this is the price. But in principles uh, of micro, this is marginal revenue. This is also equal to average revenue for a perfectly competitive company. It's also equal to the individual demand for the company's product, also equals to the price level. So marginal revenue equals marginal product. This is the optimal level of output. So... You sell something, right? We are trying to determine our uh, labor demand. First of all, you need to ask yourself this question. Am I producing at the best level? Okay, so your labor demand comes from producing from the best level. And it comes from correct profit maximization. So everything is connected. So alternative interpretation of the marginal productivity condition, right? Value marginal product equals the wage rate. Remember, profit maximizing condition produced such that marginal revenue equals marginal cost, which is also equal to price equals marginal cost, right? So here, for a perfectly competitive company, I'm just repeating everything again and again. So what is marginal cost? Marginal cost is cost of producing extra unit of out output. How much was this? Let me tell you uh, how to figure it out. How much does it cost to produce this one? So you look at the marginal product of a worker. Let's say the worker who produced this produces four of these per hour. So to produce one, this worker needs to spend one quarter of her hour, right? One fourth of her hour. And if her wage rate is, let's say, $20, Divided by, that's hourly wage rate, divided by one quarter of her time, 40 divided by 4, right? So $40, oops, so her hourly wage rate is $40. Let's say this is a very well-paying company. I don't, I don't know. We don't know, okay? So marginal product of this worker is to produce 4 cups, okay? So what's the marginal cost of producing one uh, marginal cost of producing one of these Stanley cups? So it is going to be how much I'm paying for a person per hour divided by how much of that person's time do we need? Because if I'm producing four in an hour, I need one fourth of my time to produce this. Okay? So see how everything is connected? 
So marginal cost is equal to one over marginal product of worker times wage rate. So marginal cost is basically I need one over marginal product of worker fraction of a worker to produce one unit. So a worker produces four per hour. I need one quarter of this person's time to produce just one times cost of one worker. So if the wage rate is $40 and this person can produce four of these, to produce one of these, I need to pay this individual $10. Okay. So putting everything together, look, marginal cost equals price. Oh, interesting. It, it can be replaced, right? It, whenever I see marginal cost, I can just put price because... It comes from profit maximization. Look what we have together. Price equals one over marginal product of worker employment times wages. You can actually <laughs> bring this up to the numerator. Price times marginal product of worker is equal to the wage rate. So it is my best level of employment choice. It comes from profit maximization condition. Okay, therefore, this profit maximization condition, marginal cost equals marginal revenue, implies, this is two-sided arrow, implies optimal level of employment. So, when you choose the optimal level of output, you are by definition also choosing the best level of employment. Okay. So let's talk about the critiques of marginal productivity theory. What's the marginal productivity theory? Marginal product of any factor of production employment here times the price, right? We need to pay the individual such that the wage rate is equal to exactly how much they add to the company. Criticism one says the theory bears little relation to the way that employers make hiring decisions. Criticism too is assumptions of the theory are not very realistic, but in real life, employers act as if they know the implications of the marginal productivity theory. And you can see even in the Holy uh, Scripts, you know, we had the part from the um, Bible at the beginning of the chapter. It looks like as if the employers know the implications of the marginal productivity theory. They try to make profits and remain in business. All right. I'll see you in part four where we dig deeper into profit maximization. Long run pro hiring decision where not only labor employment is variable, but also capital is variable. So you are now making capital decision as well as employment decision will also connect it with cost minimization. I'll see you in part four.